Well, welcome to House Smarts. I'm Lou Manfredini. Thank you so much for joining us. We have a lot coming up on today's show. We're going to be talking about log cabin living. You'd be surprised at how many people are actually building log cabins these days, but their roots come from homes that look like the one behind me. We're actually at a place called the Naper Settlement in Naperville, Illinois. It's an example of pioneer living from back in the 1800s. It's pretty cool. Come with me. I'm meeting up with Debbie Grinnell, Director of Preservation Services. She's an expert on this cabin, which was moved here from the southern part of the state in the 1970s. Interestingly enough, our log cabin isn't just white oak. There's also some uh, cucumber tree, a type of magnolia, um, some poplar. So they really were using whatever resources they had right. in the vicinity of where they were establishing their farmstead and home. You know, we think about a log cabin, I suppose we think about like Abraham Lincoln, right? They talk about him sure. living in a log cabin. I mean, it could have been something very similar to this. Absolutely, and right. there were different styles of log cabins. Some were simpler, one room. Some were called a dog trot, where you had two rooms on each side with a tunnel breezeway coming through the middle. Right. So they did have different styles within that very simple construction. You know, people think about a log cabin like, well, aren't they supposed to be stacked one on top of another? But it's kind of like a mortar in between that. What is that called? They would use a chinking and daub to fill in the space between the logs, and actually that would give it structural strength, and the chinking is what you don't see behind the smoother daubing finish, and they would use different blocks of wood, moss, even animal dung, actually, really? to fill that in to serve as the insulation and support the weight, the weight of the log in the middle of the wall. Then they would use the daubing, which is a mortar-like material, to cover that, and that's what would kind of weatherproof and seal the house. Were they relatively comfortable to live in? I mean, as far as temperature-wise, I mean, I would think that the wood was relatively resilient. Well, you can see from the log house here that the depth of the wood ranges from 8 to 12 inches. So you have a very thick wall that you're insulating. However, you still have to heat the space. And if you have a good fire, and you have that burning for a while, it is going to hold the heat, but depending on where you are in the country, the types of wind and snow that you're facing, I don't know that it would compare exactly yeah. to the comforts of today. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right, you're probably right. I got a question, when's the last time you saw something 167 years old? Well, that's what these logs are. That's old, right? All natural, still standing. How can that be? Well, remember, when it's this old, it's old growth lumber. It's very dense, it's very hard. But one of the interesting things about log cabins is the logs are allowed to do what they do in nature, dry out. Now, the lumber and the wood we use now on decks and siding, we spend all this money preserving it, and here they've done nothing. But at the settlement, they're sure to watch these checks in here, all these crevices, and take out any of the organic material because that's allowed to sit there, and if it is, then moisture gets inside of there and it helps decay the wood. The same is true for your home. Pay attention to your decks and your siding and you're gonna put a preservative on there, but also make sure it's clean and you don't allow debris to accumulate because that can trap moisture and cause you headaches as it pertains to maintenance and replacement. All right, let's go inside. So Joe is a museum educator? That's correct. It's a nice hat. Thank you. Is this a typical garb of what? <laughs> of 1830s, yes. Yeah, this I mean, this is typically garb. what they would be. Now, as I look around this log cabin, I mean, it's very sweet and endearing, but it's not that big. No, not at all. And there's a practical reason as to why log cabins were this size. Can you tell us? Well, this is about the average size, 16 by 18 foot. And to start with, uh, understand that the best log for a wall on a cabin is one that is roughly the same diameter from start to finish. Right. You start looking at trees, you'll notice there's about a 10 to 20 foot length of the tree that where is roughly the same diameter. Right. Also, this is the original DIY. It's you and Ma who put up the house, Lou. And you truly cannot handle a log that is much longer than 20 foot as you walk it up these walls. Right, very practical. It's like, who's going to lift it? Because you're out in the middle of nowhere. Well, pretty much I think your end of the log is safe. My end of the log <laughs> is in question. That's for sure. Uh, I've always joked as a builder that someday I'm just going to build a house that the first floor is a kitchen because when you entertain or anybody's <laughs> there, everybody ends up in the kitchen. Well, really, that's what this first oh, floor is. It's your kitchen. It 
is the dining room, it is the bedroom, it is the family room, it is your workspace. Everything is done in this one room. Now this one has a bed here, I assume that mom and dad would be down mom, here. Mom and pa get the bed, newest baby gets the cradle, the rest of the children upstairs, upstairs in the loft. Flat floor. Flat floor, it's also where we're going to store our harvest once you've gotten everything plowed and planted, Lou. So it's kind of like the kids are sleeping in the pantry. <laughs> You know what, these pioneers were not very tall. All right, I'll have more from the Naper settlement coming up, but right now, take a look at this green piece.